Hi, it's February 6th, 2013. This is Dan Davidson. I'm going to quickly go over some loud booms uh, and what's going on with these uh, loud booms that have been heard all around the country. I'm going to begin with something recent, just a few hours ago, uh, or I guess maybe this is uh, late last night. I just saw this recently. Uh, a loud boom rattled Milton, and I don't know how to say it, cantonment, I guess, uh, areas. Uh, this is basically Pensacola. Uh, loud booms, unexplained. Uh, Air Force was doing some stuff in the area, but explicitly say they did nothing that would have caused uh, these booms. Uh, so we have another instance of loud, unexplained booms. Okay, and uh, this is something that's been ongoing for several years now. Uh, began, you know, in 2010, we really started to see an uptick of these. Uh, hear a lot of different reports of them. Here's a map I've plotted. Uh, here's the most recent one in pink. Um, brand new today or yesterday. But the rest of these, uh, these are loud unexplained booms that began uh, late 2010. So that's when I started plotting. So from two, late 2010 through today. Um, and you see they're more concentrated uh, in the Midwest to the east. Uh, and now this one, the one that just happened, is the uh, southernmost uh, boom. Now, I'm using the word boom just because that's how the media reported. We're going to switch over to uh, a more scientific name for these brontides or brontide episodes, uh, which is what uh, comes up at times in the scientific literature. And, and they have been studied academically in the past, and uh, I'm a bit disappointed because the USGS takes one position on them, at least officially on their site, seems to, uh, and it seems to be the position that is least compelling in the literature, at least from what I've read. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and try to explain what's going on, but I'm just going to throw this out initially just to say that these are are going to be seismic, uh, not seismic events per se, but related to seismic events, uh, or at least have the potential to. They're, they are, in many cases, probably going to be gas releases, uh, pressurized gas releasing, being released from the Earth. Now, let me go ahead and show you a few things here. Here is a map of North America that has plotted um, 4.0 magnitude or greater earthquakes since 1898. So you see, of course, around the Ring of Fire, uh, you're going to have the most significant earthquake activity. But you can obviously see it brightens up here in the New Madrid area, and then you have this line running through, you know, Tennessee and and you know, southern states, Alabama, Mississippi. It looks like, right? I mean, uh, then you have South Carolina into Georgia up here, uh, New York, into Ontario. Okay, so you see where the concentrations, concentrations are. Um, when we do a layover map of just the United States, continental United States, we have uh, where these red is greatest risk of seismic activity, and, and these are hazard areas, uh, yellow and on out, uh, less significant to no or, no or minimal risk in the uh, uh, like gray, you see that most of these earthquakes are uh, lining up, or these earthquakes are lining up where the hazard zones are, the, uh, where the hazard's the greatest. Now, what I want to show is this map <clears throat> overlaid on this earthquake map. Uh, what you'll find is, I think, interesting. Okay, so here's an earthquake uh, map since 1898, 4.0 and greater. Notice, for example, this most recent uh, boom is right on. Pensacola dot, okay, right there. This boom happened in an area that has a risk of uh, earthquake, you know, moderate earthquake at least, uh, 4.0 or greater. Uh, you see a concentration of these, you know, in this area, which is an area with a lot of earthquakes, okay. So this this region, you have South Carolina, oops, South Carolina. 
So these are lining up where earthquakes are. But there's something really interesting, more interesting than where these dots are relative to these earthquakes, to me, uh, is why we don't have many out here. There have been claims of hearing booms in Utah, and there might be other ones as well. But but there is actually a pretty plausible, a pretty plausible case that those aren't uh, brontide events where they uh, where they're unexplained. Uh, the Air Force actually claims responsibility for the booms that were heard in Utah, uh, having done some drills there at the same time. So it's hard to just discredit that that kind of testimony. But what you have here is an area historically, the last hundred years has been very active uh, seismically with very little activity in, in these Brontide episodes with these booms. Uh, and yet, over here, where there's been less activity over the last 100 years, uh, there's more activity right now. Now, what I'm going to show you going through, I'm going to go through an academic article with you to try to explain a little bit what might be going on. Um, they, these, it could be, uh, you can't say they are or will be, uh, or are, but these could be precursory uh, precur these events could, could uh, indicate that an earthquake, uh, a major earthquake, is on the way uh, somewhere over here and maybe more than one. So this is the article, 1979, April 27th, from Science Magazine, Brontides, Natural Explosive Noises by Gold and Soder. Uh, I'm going to go and just highlight some things. So historical and scientific records from various parts of the world contain many accounts of episodes of mysterious booming or explosive noises, usually described as resembling thunder or the firing of distant artillery, artillery or, and sometimes, but by no means always, occurring in association with perceptible seismic activity. Obvious causes, such as art artificial explosions, thunder, or meteorite entry, can be ruled out in most cases. Some of these episodes appear to have been precursory to major earthquakes. Uh, in this article, we will refer to all such natural booming noises, and I'm going to follow them here, uh, of unknown origins as bron unknown origin as brontides, following the common usage of earlier scientific literature. The historical record suggests uh, occurrences of booming noises in various degrees of association with earthquakes. So these boomings are often associated with earthquakes, and that's what what I want to you know, hone in on here, uh, following uh, Soder and Gold. In some cases, a long series of intermittent booming noises is heard, sometimes extending over many years, but having no clear association with seismic activity. So that's possible, where you can have these booms uh, and no association with seismic activity. Now, what's interesting, uh, I believe the guy, I don't know his name, but uh, his channel's name, United Knowledge, um, has done some interesting work on very recent uh, Bronsite episodes in the last month or two, uh, December and January 2012-2013, um, showing that there is an association with earthquakes uh, in, in the region. Either way, uh, so, but not necessarily with major earthquakes at this point. In other cases, the series include a number of minor seismic shocks in close coincidence with some of the booming noises. This is what United Knowledge has shown. But there's also these, where the series includes a major earthquake. Okay, and that's what I think most people are, want to be on the watch for. Okay, several natural sources of these brontides. There are several different ones. One, direct transmission during an earthquake of seismic energy into the air. That can cause a loud boom. You can have a fracture of an exposed or near-surface rock face. This is called a rock burst. That's another possibility. Uh, third, Sudden venting of high pressure gas from deep below through fissures in the ground. Events of this type are, are known to occur in connection with so called mud volcanoes and may well occur in other areas where the geological identification of the exit points is more difficult. And they point out that really it makes more sense that the loud ones would come, it, it would be louder when, there's not, uh, when it's not coming out of a mud volcano because mud should uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, limit. Uh, put a limit on how loud the sound can be. Okay, electrostatic ignition of combustible gases that have emerged from below. So you can have burning events, explosive events, uh, as well when the gases are combustible and actually ignite, making a boom. Uh, there are lots of places in the world where booms are happening all the time. Seneca Guns uh, up in uh, New York State, There's other places like here in the Bay of Bengal uh, where there have been booms heard from for many years. But there's possible association with earthquakes in this case, um, but here there's a suggestion of an association with the 
with the great Assam earthquake of June 12, 1897, which was an 8.1, the frequency of booming noises is reported to have increased in the days before the earthquake and to have subsided markedly thereafter. So here's another indication of association, major earthquake. Okay. Um, there is now several lines of observ observational evidence strongly suggesting the role of, uh, for the eruption of high pressure and sometimes combustible gas in connection with seismic activity. And we can't rule out this, this suggested uh, uh, mechanism of causing the, the sounds. Okay, uh, I'm going to move ahead because I don't want to uh, run out of time. But um, you can pause and read the rest if you'd like. Let me move to the next page. You, 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 I hope this is getting the point. Uh, what I want to do now is emphasize or focus on uh, where these have been precursory bronzite episodes. Uh, in 1886, the Charleston earthquake, for 18 months before the earthquake, which was a 7.3 magnitude earthquake, uh, there were bronzite episodes, uh, pretty regularly reported on in the news three months before the earthquake, uh, and they continued a little while after the earthquake as well. So here's a case where out of nowhere we start having bronzite episodes. Uh, they last for over a year, you know, happening all around the state. Uh, and then, finally, you have a 7.3 earthquake. Another example is 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which was a 7.8 magnitude and uh, destroyed the city. Um, <clears throat> according to one investigator, heavy detonations and rumblings were heard near the base of Mount Tampalpais, I don't know, Marin County, during the winter months and previous to the great earthquake which destroyed San Francisco. Okay, so again, uh, and they continue to be heard afterwards for some time and as late as 1908. Here, this uh, East Anatolian earthquake, a 7.3, was preceded by uh, more of these episodes, bronzite episodes. Okay, so major earthquake preceded by bronzite episodes. And though, the, and even in this case, there were no foreshocks. So it wasn't that these were earthquakes themselves. These were just uh, loud booming noises. Okay, so these loud booms people hear. They heard those booms there too. And then I don't know where you have this big earthquake without foreshocks. Brontides accompanying uh, major earthquakes, but without precursory series. There have also been cases where the brontides happened during the earthquake, as in this New Zealand 7.8 uh, earthquake. People, you know. Hearing the loud booms throughout the earthquake. That can, now the difficulty there is uh, that can be uh, not necessarily gas explosions, but it could also be uh, rock bursts. Okay. Such bronchite events accompanying violent earthquakes may be due to a number of causes, including direct ground air admission, uh, transmission, rock bursts, and landslides. Gas eruption may be indicated as a cause if the time relation with the shocks cannot account for booms. And this is what's happening. We're not having, uh, right now, all these bronzite upsides in the United States uh, are not, and Canada are not associated with, uh, are being caused directly by an earthquake that's being detected on a very sensitive uh, instruments for detecting earthquakes, right? We're not, we're not picking them up. No, they're not picking them up. And, and so this is why the gas emission explanation uh, may be indicated. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to step back. Oops. Let me, let me go ahead and, furthermore, the gas emission explanation is made probable in some instances by the, law, by the range of other phenomena reported that demand a violent and sudden increase of the ground core fluid pressure. Okay. There are numerous reports of flames from the uh, ground during major earthquakes, implying not only the release of combustible gases, but also their spontaneous ignition, loud roaring and hissing noises, as well as fountains of mud, water, and sand. Uh, and bubbling in rivers and waters, like we were seeing in Louisiana. Okay, here's a particular ex a spectacular display of all these phenomena in the New Madrid earthquake of 1811. During the first four shocks, tremendous and uninterrupted explosions resembling a discharge of artillery were heard from the opposite shore. Wherever the veins, fissures of the earthquake ran, there was a volcanic discharge of combustible matter to a great height, and incessant rumbling was heard below, and the bed of, uh, of the river was excessively agitated whilst the water assumed a turbid and boiling appearance. Near a boat, a spout of confined air breaking its way through the waters burst forth and with a loud loud report, discharged mud sticks, etc., from the river's bed at least 30 feet above the surface. Running out of time, 10 seconds. Basically, what these booms are, 
uh, bronchite episodes, gas building up, uh, possibly precursors of an earthquake. So that's